Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and I've been making a game called Osaur for over a year. Osaur is a roguelike mixed with the classic shoot 'em up games. Its story is all about mental health issues and the fight against fears. The game is actually done for some time now, but before I release it, I just want to improve it and make it the best I can possibly create. Just to make sure that we are on the same page, let's have a look at what Osaur has to offer at the moment. Every run is made out of four different areas called Blossom Skies, Fields of Fire, Forgotten Nebula and lastly Ominous Hollow. Each of these four areas not only has a slightly unique design like Fields of Fire is focused on movement but all have three levels with a boss at the end. In the case of Ominous Hollow this is the final boss but in case of the three other areas this boss is randomly chosen from a pool of three bosses. But how can you fight these bosses? Besides simply moving and shooting, you also have a dash move to dodge and you can use spells which are special attacks. After fighting a boss there are also upgrade worlds where you can, as the name might have already told you, buy upgrades. These can increase your health capacity but also can give you the chance of dealing double damage to boss. There are a lot of different ones. But now let's get into what I've done since the last devlog, which had been two months ago. Just like every devlog, I tweaked the visuals, because it's just a really important aspect of game creation to me. And since we're nearing the end of development of this game, the changes are obviously getting smaller and less meaningful. However, first of all, I got one little addition that changes the look quite a lot and this is the new red glow I added to the faces of the enemies and bosses. I also tweaked the colors a little using Unity's post processing and soft shapes. With that Blossom Skies also has a little bit of a purple touch now. Just a few days ago I also noticed that some background elements were in the foreground so I fixed these and blurred the ones that still were not. One thing that had been very outdated in perspectives of style and quality had been the area icons. So I gave these a little overhaul plus I created one for the upgrade world. And talking about the upgrade world, I remade the notifications when you can't buy a specific item. And I drew a proper icon for the shortcut activator. Other than that I created an effect for the camera free spell remade the arrow at the end of a level to fit the current style, fixed a few lore cards, added some smaller dust particles and just did a lot of work to make the user interface look more polished. Some of you know that one of my biggest weaknesses is audio. I just can't produce good sound effects and music is even worse. In terms of music, I teamed up with the amazing musician Chris Kohler, who just finished all of the music a week ago. If you wonder what it sounds like, all the music playing in the background of this video is from Osor. But let's get back to the elephant in the room. How do I add sound effects to my game? And it's very simple. I have like a huge library of sound effects on my computer and then I search for sounds that fit and after I'm happy with the ones I found, I add them just the best way for me because this way the sounds are not bad and I can focus on the stuff I'm good at. The addition of sounds is very easy as well because I've created an easy to use system inside of Unity which I use to add every single sound effect. Though the implementation is super straightforward it was really tricky to play a sound when switching between buttons. After some research on how I could do that with Unity's built-in systems I discovered the event trigger with which it can be done really easily. After all effects were added I also balanced and fixed the volume settings just as I balance out the audio reverb zones. Lastly I changed the track you hear when dead to some ghost whispers before it was just the same track but slowed down. And then there is stuff. I think it's just the best word to describe those tiny tweaks and additions when you're so close to finishing a project. 
to be honest, I did so much stuff so that I'm not going to talk about everything I've done. But one pretty important thing is that I balance a lot of enemies as well as two bosses, a Kumo, which I made easier, and Limus, which I made more challenging. Furthermore, I redesigned the abandoned soul to shoot four bullets at a time and drew a better boomerang for Boomerang. The last enemy related thing I did is that I completely recoded the warm enemy and changed its movement behavior. And then I needed to do one thing that just took ages to be done. This was correcting all lore stories and also rewriting most of them. To speed up the process a bit, I used a tool called Grammarly. Helped me a lot there. After I was finally done with that, I actually added the introduction cutscene into the game so you can access it. Then I added a shortcut notification, fixed a ton of bugs and glitches, made it so that you get sucked into the portal that appears after a boss fight, and changed the level end. Now you must actually exit the screen to exit the level. And recently, the past week or two, I just drew a lot of logo versions and icons I could potentially use for marketing at some point. To be really honest, I don't know what's next. At the moment I'm just fixing bugs and I mean it's scary because everything is coming to an end and with that I can definitely say that I saw coming out this year for sure but I just can't tell which month. At the end of the day I just hope that you liked this video and I'd appreciate it so much if you subscribed and maybe shared a little feedback on Osor. Have a good one. Cheers.